Good afternoon, everybody. We have a solid, uniform, 45 kilogram ball of diameter 32 centimeters, which is supported against a vertical frictionless wall using a thin 30 centimeter wire. We have to draw the free body diagram for the ball and then use that to find the tension and then solve for how hard the ball pushes against the wall. Uh, part A and Part B are pretty straightforward, but you won't be able to solve them unless you know the angle between the wall and the wire. And the challenge lies in the fact that we were not provided with that. But if we uh, pay close attention to the geometry in the picture, we can actually solve for it. And notice uh, the picture has drawn this dotted line here on the sphere, uh, or the ball, whatever you want to refer to it as. And um, I'm going to call that R, the radius, right? And what is the radius? Well, radius is equal to the diameter of the ball divided by 2. So 32 centimeters cut in half is 16. So we have a length of 16 here, equals 16 cm, right there. And I can also extend the same kind of a dotted line directly to the right, to the point where the ball and the wall touch each other and form a right angle. And I've just created a right triangle. Right? If I put R here on the bottom. And in fact, let me craft a similar triangle uh, that may not be as messy. So I'll use Paint's Rotate feature to flip things. There we go. So filling out uh, the info that we know for the legs of the triangle. The bottom leg is 16 centimeters, that's the radius of the ball or the sphere, whatever. And then we have 30 plus 16 centimeters for the radius, uh, excuse me, for the hypotenuse of the triangle. Uh, 30 plus 16 is 46, so this whole hypotenuse length is 46 centimeters. And that's actually all we need to know to solve for that angle because we can take advantage of one of the trig functions the sine function and here's a reminder in case you don't know or you have forgotten we know that um, the sine of an angle is a ratio of the length of the opposite side so the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. So in our case, that would be 16 centimeters for the length of the opposite side to the angle. Right? Here's the angle. The length of the opposite side is right there, 16 centimeters. And then the length of the hypotenuse is that 30 plus 16, so 46 centimeters. The units cancel out, and we have this uh, fraction, 16 over 46. You may feel compelled to want to simplify it, but you don't have to. It, it's all going to be the same thing here. Um, we take the sine inverse of both sides of this equation. So the sine inverse of sine is equal to the sine inverse of 16 over 46 because the sine inverse function and sine function are <laughs> inverse functions of one another um, they kill each other off and we're left with theta so we have theta is equal to the sine inverse of 16 over 46 and you don't have to simplify this because your calculator will accept this no problem and uh, on mine it told me that this is equal to uh, about 20.35 degrees. And we're just going to hold on to two extra decimal places here for now. This is not a final answer to anything. Uh, we're just solving for this angle. So with the angle known, 
now we can finish part A and part B. Um, let's move on to drawing the free body diagram and then get the tension. So uh, part A right here. We know the drill for a free body diagram. I think I've done this quite a few times here. We have uh, plus X acting in the um, rightward direction and then plus Y acting in the upward direction. And um, if we bring the picture over, uh, just so we can kind of see what's going on here without having to switch back and forth, I can tell you that there are three forces that we have to account for. The first one is going to be the weight of the ball or the sphere or the object, whatever. That will point directly down. There's W. We know that um, the wall is going to push back on the ball here, right? It's going to push back to the left, right? Right here. And that will be like the normal force. We'll call that the normal, right? So the wall pushing on the ball is the normal force. Um, maybe I'll even make a note of that because it will become significant in the next part. So N is equal to force of wall on ball. Okay, Force of wall on ball. Uh, last force that is acting on this ball is the tension. And that points up and to the right. We solved for the angle and in fact to make this look a little nicer if I draw a line a gray line that is parallel to the y-axis representing where the wall is we solved for this angle right here the 20.35 degrees because the angle and the vector are pointing in opposite directions uh, it's going to make things a bit of an, an annoyance to break into components. So why not just make it easier? Why not move this angle over here? We are completely allowed to do that because between two parallel lines, if you draw a line between them, uh, this angle here, theta, and this angle here, theta, are uh, interior alternate angles as we saw in a previous problem. So they are the same. We are justified in our use of saying hey this is theta right here, right? We're not just making something up. So um, we have the tension at this point. We have the normal force which is the force of the wall pushing on the ball and we have the weight of the ball. Uh, we have the um, the angle included. So now that's everything. We can use that in accordance with Newton's second law to solve for the tension. And um, I would recommend starting off with the y direction because we actually know what the mass is. We were given that. That's the, the, the 45 kilograms here. Uh, oops, let's click on the wrong button. Forgive me. 45 kilograms. So that means we know what mg is, uh, which means we know what w is. So um, let's start off with the things that we know. Let's do in the direction of y, since we know what w is at this point. The sum of the forces in the y direction are what? Well, we have the, the positive component of the tension, which is if I select this light <clears throat> green kind of boogery color here, this is the vertical component, the Y component of the tension. Because it is the adjacent side to, the, to this angle, this is T cosine of theta. Okay, So that means we have T cosine of theta acting in the upward direction and in the opposite opposing direction we have the weight. Since the ball is motionless the net acceleration in the y direction is equal to zero 
So check this out. This is pretty cool. The weight is equal to t cosine theta. And what we wanted to solve for was the tension. So if we just divide both sides by cosine of theta, bam. Oh, oops. <laughs> well, don't cross it out on this side. Forgive me. We've got, uh, uh, let's see, we'll do mg divided by cosine theta. There's our expression for t, the tension. And um, if I plug everything in here, we would have 45.0 kilograms for the mass and 9.8 meters per second squared for the acceleration. Divided by the cosine of the angle that we solved for in the problem set up here on this first page or this first slide, that's the 20.35 degrees. So cosine of 20.35 degrees, oops, ugly three there, 35 degrees in the denominator. And what does this give us? Well, I get the following on my calculator. 470.36 newtons. However, we need to be careful uh, about significant figures. So let's go back to the problem description. Let's see, we have three significant figures here because of the inclusion of the dot zero. Three significant figures here and three significant figures here. So that means we need to include our answer in part A to three significant figures. So uh, here's one, here's two, here's three. So the cutoff is right where the decimal place is, actually. Since 0.3 is smaller than 0.5, we're going to round down, giving us approximately equal to 470 newtons. That's the answer to part A, right? So we got the answer to part A by taking the Y component of Newton's second law using the angle that we solved for in the problem setup. And that kind of led us to this answer down here. So that's it for part A. What about part B? Uh, how hard does the ball push against the wall? Well, here's a very important thing to consider, right? By Newton's third law, we have the following. The magnitude of the force of the wall that pushes on, on the ball, the magnitude of that vector is equal to the magnitude of the force that the ball pushes on the wall. The wall. The magnitude of these two vectors are the same, right? We know that Newton's third law says those um, those forces are equal and opposite, right? But if we're just looking at the magnitude of them, they're equal. And on page two, we said the force of the wall on the ball is the normal force. So wall on ball. This one here, left-hand side. So the normal force, that's equal in magnitude to the force that we're trying to solve for here. Forces on the wall. The normal force is equal in length but opposite in direction to the force of the ball pushing on the wall, right? And in fact, if I even go back to page two here, um, <clears throat> if the normal force of the wall points to the left, I mean, it only makes sense even from the picture that the force from the ball is going to be pointed, pointing in the opposite direction, right? In the positive direction. So we should end up with a positive answer. We should not be ending up with a negative answer. It's a very important thing to consider and we're considering that using Newton's third law. So uh, we, we should be extremely secure in our answer 
by using everything within the system that we've uh, kind of immersed ourselves in here. So if I, instead of using um, the horizontal, or the vertical direction for Newton's second law, what if I use the horizontal direction? Can I get the normal force? Because if I solve for the normal force, well, that's the same magnitude of the thing that I'm looking for. So um, let's do that. Let's do sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to what? Going back to page two, um, I finish off the triangle up here on the tension triangle right there. And um, that piece, I'll kind of draw an arrow towards it. That piece of the triangle, it's not the cosine, but it's the sine, T sine theta. And that points to the right. So we have T sine theta pointing to the right, and then the, the blue normal force pointing in the opposite direction, to the left. So let's stick that in our equation here. Is equal to T sine theta pointing to the right minus the normal force pointing in the opposite direction. And the net acceleration in the x direction is zero. It isn't moving. So that means we can move the normal force over and say, hey, T sine theta is equal to the normal force. We wanted to solve for that. That's great. In fact, we're about uh, half a step away from the answer, but we can go even further. We can simplify this because we weren't given the tension. You can't give this as an answer uh, because you weren't provided with this variable. right? So instead, let's rewrite it in terms of a variable that we were given, the mass. Uh, going back to this slide here, we have this equation t is equal to mg over cosine of theta. So I can exchange an unknown variable in terms of one that I do know using what I've circled in orange. Let's plug that in back on slide three. I said t is equal to m, oof, <laughs> one more time, mg over cosine of theta multiplied by sine of theta. That's equal to the normal force. Cool. Um, we know what sine divided by cosine is. That's just tangent. Right? So tan theta, a reminder in case you don't remember from your trig classes. Tangent of theta is sine of theta over cosine theta. So let's rewrite this as mg tangent of theta equal to n. And, um, yeah, that's cool. Now we have everything that we need. Let's plug it all in. So 45.0 kilograms, uh, 9.8 meters per second squared, times tangent of 20.35 degrees. This is equal to the normal force. And when I plug this into my calculator, um, it's going to be roughly in the area of like 163.44-ish, something like that. Uh, if you approximate using 9.81 or a different angle, you might get a, a number that's different to this one, but it should be similar. Um, either 163 or 164 newtons. Um, remember that we need to report this to three significant figures. So that means the cutoff happens at the same place, at the decimal point. So for, for me, based on my calculator, uh, I would get an answer of 163 newtons. That's what the normal force is equal to, which is equal to the force that the ball pushes pushes on the wall, right? And it's a positive number, like we said that it should have been, because 
this value, the force that the ball pushes on the wall, should be positive. Right? It's going to point to the right. Um, and it comes from the fact that the normal force and that force have the same magnitude by Newton's third law. So that's it. Um, we have part A being 470 newtons. Uh, that's the tension in the wire. And then how hard does the ball push against the wall? Well, it pushes against the wall uh, the same magnitude as the normal force, uh, 163 newtons to the right. And that's it. Thanks for watching.